Hello, today we're talking about internal energy and internal energy is the energy stored inside a system and that could be like an ice cube or a glass of water and it's stored by the particles by which we mean atoms or molecules in that system. So it's the energy stored inside a system by the particles that make up that system. So we can break it down into two separate parts. We can look at, for example, the particles in a gas. So here are some particles in a gas. And as you can imagine, they'll be moving around randomly at different speeds in different directions, sometimes colliding with the sides of the container. But we can describe those particles, particles as having a kinetic energy store. They have kinetic energy. So one part of internal energy is the kinetic energy of the particles. But the second part is to do with the particles and the forces of attraction in between those particles as shown by those red lines. Those are the forces of attraction and because of those forces of attraction we have potential energy in the particles due to their position compared to each other. So we can actually break down internal energy into two different parts. We can say it's the kinetic energy of the particles plus the potential energy of the particles and this is what we mean when we talk about internal energy. Now the other thing is what happens when we add or supply heat energy to a system like for example an ice cube well we've seen this before but if we have an ice cube and we provide heat energy the temperature will rise it will get to a certain point called the melting point at which the temperature will stay the same for a little while while it melts and only after it's all melted will the temperature begin to rise again and it will all be a liquid so here we can see the temperature rising as we transfer in more heat energy it will then get to a point called the boiling point and again the temperature will stay the same while it changes to a gas and once it's all changed to a gas the temperature will begin to rise again. Now what's happening in terms of the internal energy? Well we can do a simplified version of that graph there and we can see that heat heating the system will increase the internal energy but when we have the parts of the graph that are rising we can see that heating will increase the temperature. So heating will either increase the temperature of our system or at the flat parts it will cause a change in state. So we can say heating will either increase the temperature or cause a change in state of that system. Okay, so this graph is probably a useful summary to, to, to describe the effect of heating on a system.